Have you ever wondered how a beach house can withstand 150 mile an hour winds from a hurricane? These help. These help also. These help a lot. So my name is Jason, I am the owner of Sella Builders LLC and I specialize in building beach houses right here on the upper Texas coast from Matagorda all the way up to Port Bolivar. I'm 6'1". This strap is 66 inches long and it comes all the way up to my chin. So that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to examine how our structural engineers using straps like this and a bunch of other different techniques secure these houses against 150 mile an hour hurricane wind speeds. Before we can do that, at the end of our last video, we were just at our finished floor. So we need to build a house. So let's go check on progress. Today is March 1st, so it took us about three weeks to get to this point to where we now we finally have the shell of our house completed here on our beach house. So let's walk through the steps that we need to take in order to secure this house to protect it from a category five hurricane. Every nail, bolt, nut, and screw that goes on this house is what is called hot dip galvanized. That means it will not rust, especially because we are so close to salt water. So the first thing we have are our bolts. All of our bolts are 18 inches by three quarters of an inch thick. And you see, so you put a washer here, a washer here, and then you have your bolt over here. They run this through your piling, and then with a torque gun, they screw this in so it's really, really tight. We have these, we have multiple of these on every single piling, and this connects the houses, the house to the pilings. 
there's two main clips and straps that are used on every beach house. The first is this. This is an Simpson H 2.5 clip. The second are these. These are Simpson LSTA straps. They come in ranges from 18 inches all the way up to 36 inches. And then every H2.5 clip or the LSTA straps get used with these. These are H1 one and a half inch hot dip galvanized nails. Inside the house, at the top of every single stud and above every single window or door, an H2.5 clip is placed. And this connects the, the stud to the top plate of the wall. On this house, it's pretty safe to say we will install between two and 300, probably closer to 300 of these H2.5 clips. They are also connected to where on the outside to where our rafters meet our top plate. Every single rafter gets an H2.5 clip. Our LSTA straps are used both outside and inside the house. On the outside, the LSTAs are used on three places. You'll find them on the bottom of the wall, so they will be attached to the stringer and run up to about 18 inches onto the wall. Every single wall stud gets an LSTA strap. You will also find them where between our first floor and our second floor, so 18 inches at the top of the first floor wall to 18 inches to the bottom of the second floor wall, they each get a strap. The third place you'll find these LSTA straps is up on the roof. Every single place where our roof joists overlap our ridge, you will find a strap over top of that. That helps keep the roof together. The other place on the inside of the house that we use the LSTA straps is on top of all of our doors and windows. These combined with the H2.5 clips really secure these areas. And you see where the LSTA, it is wrapped from the top plate, nailed up there, and then it is nailed down the stud. So the LSTA straps and the H2.5 clips, they do work, but there's some places where we need to break out the big dogs. This is our MSTC B3Z66 strap. This thing is 66 inches high, it comes up to my chin, and we have to install 24 of these throughout the house. They use, not only do we have to install them, but they use, this is a 10D hot dip galvanized ridge nail. These have to be hand nailed. We don't just put these wherever we want. They are specifically placed and determined by our structural engineer. See, we have four on each front corner of the first floor of the house, and then we have four on the second floor of the back of the house, and then we have four down each side of the house. But not only do we have them outside the house, we also have four placed inside the house. In order to do this, we have to cut a hole in the subfloor, we push the strap up through the bottom of the floor, and then it gets nailed to the stud. And not only do they get nailed on the inside, but they also get nailed on the bottom of the the strap. One of the other big doll straps we use is this guy. This is a Simpson HDU5. This goes on the second floor. This goes on the first floor. We drill a hole through the subfloor and these get bolted in place. And then we literally use these to connect the first floor to the second floor to hold them down. We have to install seven of these at specific locations throughout our house as determined by our structural engineer. On the inside of the house where we put those four tall 66 inch straps, now we are also going to put plywood over that entire wall. That is called a shear wall. We then attach LSTA straps from our wall across our truss and what this does is it transfers the wind load from the one shear wall to the other. This is called a drag strut. 
All of our straps, bolts, and clips are designed for two things, to prevent the house from lifting and to prevent the house from twisting. This is called wind shear. Another trick that structural engineers use is what is called a balloon wall. This is a balloon wall. This is where our steps go. We have two by six by 20s, eight inches on center. A standard stud is 16 inches on center. These are eight inches on center. And they go from the bottom plate of our first floor all the way up to the top plate on our second floor. Another way to structurally support your house is by using two by six exterior walls. If you're building on the coast, especially a two-story house, and your builder doesn't use two by six exterior walls, I would strongly question your builder. The additional structural strength and support this one method gives makes a huge difference when it comes to protecting your house against a category five hurricane or any storm for that matter. If you're not sure, a good way to check to see if you have two by six walls is by looking at the window. So anything less than five and a half inches is a two by four exterior wall. So some of the things that we did go for every beach house and some are just specific to this house. Obviously every engineer does things a little bit differently. But I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you want to join us on our journey to watch this house be built, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And I would really appreciate it as I'm trying to grow this channel. Drop a comment and maybe um, hit the like button to really help the algorithm. On our next video, we're going to tackle stage four of our engineering process, and that is drying this house in. So our sheathing, roof deck, and our siding and we just might run a simulated hurricane experiment just to check different products and uh, how they work. So thanks again for watching. Again, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next episode of Texas Coastal Construction. Y'all have a blessed day.